our final presentation of the first half is from J.D. Gajarwala, and he'll correct me later. Uh, J.D. is going to talk about his trip back to India after living in the U.S. for 15 years. He'd been here 15 years and not visited India, and so he took many things for granted and realized that after his trip and also came back with different ideas that we could adopt here in the U.S. Take it away. Thanks. Can I keep it here and will it work? Or? Try. Yeah. Okay. Yep. My name's J.D. and you got it right. It's exactly how it's, it's exactly, just exactly how it looks up there. Um, so today I wanted to share with you about my experience uh, for my trip, trip back to India. But first I want to share a quick background. Um, originally moved to uh, Des Moines, Iowa when I was 10 years old. And like many, I spent my whole entire childhood here. And I didn't go back for nearly 15 years. So I'd become fully accustomed to life in the US. And um, didn't really think things would be that much different when I got back there. Um, but just after landing in Mumbai, just within a few hours, I started to realize that my memory was clearly not serving me right. I'd taken a lot of things for granted. So let's get started. <laughs> Number one, toilet paper. Landed in Mumbai, went to the bathroom. I've done my research on toilet. I from what I remember, but there was no toilet paper. Um, and the thought of using my hand, I was ready to take the next flight back. Uh, so the rest of my trip, I traveled with a bag that had toilet paper with me everywhere. Um, TSA, um, most people don't like the TSA in the USA, but you know, roaming around in India, um, the security guards there at the airports all have what looked like an AK-47. And, um, and while I was going into the country, um, I clearly had too much cologne and I had to negotiate a $100 rate to get past security. Um, the commute isn't too bad in Iowa. Uh, in India, I found very quickly um, roads were made for cows, whatever else, tractors, <laughs> anything that would be on there. Uh, and I realized what the oh shit handlebars were made for finally on the cars. <laughs> um, hot water, uh, just relaxing. Um, after a long trip uh, with hot water just running down you, it was not an option. Um, I quickly found that many homes out there still don't have hot water. They would normally boil it. And, or um, a lot of the new homes are uh, starting to have some hot water options that are built in. Um, there's certainly no pets on a leash law there. Um, <laughs> this is a dog that was in the condo neighborhood that just kind of lived there. Everybody fed it. Nobody had pets of their own, it looked like. The traveling monkeys were there just about every single morning. Um, it's kind of annoying. Urgent care here could take an hour while you fill out paperwork in India. It's hard to read, but back there it says it's a digital x-ray place, which was right around an alley. Um, so I guess waiting for an hour, things aren't too bad, but maybe this might have been affordable. So um, driver licenses. Um, License plates, insurance, and uh, a lot of people on the roads didn't have any of them. Um, hit and runs are pretty normal, and so you better start recognize, you know, remembering nine to twelve digit long license plates, <laughs> which I still don't know why. What the difference is? Um, mall parking. Um, this is not a picture that I that I, while I was there, but while I was there. To get into the mall, we actually had to have our car checked due to increased security all throughout India. And um, you know, on top of that, parking wasn't even free. We had to pay for that. Um, and if the culture shock and just kind of getting used to India wasn't enough, alcohol was banned, I found out, in the region that I was in. Um, it could be purchased from the black market. Um, I mean, I don't know how I would do Friday happy hours without beer or probably be up here without that, so. Uh, not, though not everything was a hassle, so I do kind of want to share some of the things that I learned um, and some of the things that I came back with. Uh, it, I started to realize some of the things that were great while I was in India very quickly, um, just within hours of getting back in the US and within the weeks. Number one, cell phones in India. You walk in, you buy a cell phone, you get a SIM card, you leave, and that's it. In the U in US, you walk in, you have to buy a cell phone, you sign your life away for two years, and you don't even know what your next month's bill is going to be. Um, you're going to have, uh, you can pay bills with your cell phone with different services. You don't need Apple Pay. 
airlines treated you with respect as if you were a human being. Um, for, really nice meals were served, even in longer domestic flights and not just peanuts. And some people didn't even have to close their laptops. And we took off and landed successfully without that. Um, Advertising, um, I have an ad from what I found for the Equinox gym out of New York. Uh, that's a gym for an ad. That's a gym for an ad, that's an ad for a gym in India. Um, things were just very simple. They, they had somehow figured out that you didn't need to manage to have a lot of sex in advertising to get your point across. But my favorite thing that I kind of um, left with was uh, I missed the food. Everything was fresh. Um, not very many things were frozen. A lot of uh, the elderly people were completely against frozen food. A local farmer would usually come around and serve you or have food for sale that she would just purchase every single morning. And even for lunch, uh, no Jimmy John's, no Papa John's. You could get Tiffin service, which this guy would just load them all up in you know, home-cooked meals that you could have um, that were served to you just for lunch. Um, and uh, the other thing that I left with is little money goes a long way in India. Um, Dr. Devi, he's a heart surgeon. Um, and in India, he can perform bypass surgery for just $1,500. And he, he plans on getting that down to $800 in the next 10 years. That's compared to $106,000 here in the US. Um, the Mars Orbiter was sent for $73 million compared to $670 million in the US. And you can, really do, you can really get away with just a lot of little stuff by starting your own business, by just modifying a, a bike or a cart. And um, little money can kind of get you a lot further. So if you're, travel, if you're looking for an adventure, uh, trying to get out of your comfort zone, um, I'd recommend India. There's still a lot of places that are westernized out there that you can, you can go to. Um, I'd like to say that I came back. Uh, I try to appreciate as much as I can. I curse a little less at rush hour and a little more at my cell phone bill these days. <laughs>